Good day, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are. In the past couple of years, we saw an explosion in the artificial intelligence sector, but following the changes in the advertising policies worldwide, a wide range of businesses were impacted, and with the explosion in the blockchain and cryptocurrency sector, more and more firms are now developing artificial intelligence. However, these AIs have their pitfalls as well. What are the shortfalls of uh, the artificial intelligence is the topic uh, of the day, and I've invited one of the best AI specialists to join us for a very interesting chat. Artificial intelligence shortfalls in the digital age, coming up. Right, today I have the pleasure of having uh, once again Dr. Zhe Gat, CEO at uh, ebo.ai, once again in our studio. Let's, uh, let's welcome him. Hi, Zhe Zhe. Hi, Andrew. It's great to be back. Thank you for having me today. Great to, uh, to have you here and thank you for accepting the challenge. Now, I want to start by asking you, how dependent are we on uh, artificial intelligence, Zhe Zhe? Well, look, Andrew, artificial intelligence is not a type of technology which is visible like machinery is. You know, there's no label on a tool saying AI inside. So we often consume and become dependent on artificial intelligence without even knowing it, right? It helps in the selection of the seats on the planes which we purchase, the type of music we listen to. So we are highly dependent on it without often knowing it. But more than that, AI is also dependent on us humans because the footprints which we leave, the digital activity becomes the process which we call machine learning from which AI learns and grows. Right, very nice said. But uh, while most areas of, uh, of businesses are expanding due to AIs, which areas of, uh, of a business is not expanding or is limited due to uh, artificial intelligence in the last couple of years, Jeje? Well, let's start off by looking at the areas which are indeed expanding, right? And I think every process which is describable, which is linear, which you could jot down on a whiteboard, is typically ready for automation. So businesses that have those linear processes are ready to move into an AI field. So customer service, banking tills, KYC, anti-money laundering activity, document verification. These are clear touch points where AI could be valid and cannot simply automate, but it can even predict the behavior that is to come next. Now, what's the opposite of that? Which are the areas of businesses which are being limited? Well, every stage of a business that requires creativity, that requires emotional intelligence, that can never be in reality touched by an AI tool, at least not with the AI that we know today. So if you wish, those areas of business that require spontaneity, right, will always require human intervention. And AI will limit the growth of those areas because in AI, what we typically do is we look at the mean workflow and we standardize to that average. So businesses which require being outside of those averages will never really benefit from AI at this stage. Right. But um, in terms of marketing, let's take marketing because this is basically what, what my pain for today. Uh, are AIs a viable solution to replace a whole marketing team? The answer is no, um, Andrew. I think men and machines are fundamentally good at different things, right? So teams of people, they have creativity, they have intentionality. We're good as humans at forming plans, at making decisions, looking at complicated solutions and finding a way out. But we are less good, even as marketing executives, at making sense of enormous amounts of data. Computers are the opposite of us, right? They excel at the efficient data processing and they find that proverbial needle in the haystack. So if you think about this topic a little bit more, it's clear that it's not men versus machines, it's men and machines. So AI can augment the capabilities of the marketing executives which we work with today, but never replace it altogether. 
I'll tell you why I wanted to uh, to ask you this question, because uh, in the past year or so, I personally witnessed a crusade in terms of uh, advertising on social media, which impacted me and my businesses directly. Um, once uh, we saw the advertising policies changed, yeah, Apple, Google, uh, Facebook, millions of YouTube channels were demonetized or deleted yeah. with no apparent reason. Millions of Facebook accounts worldwide were deleted for, again, absolutely no reason. Yeah, apart from the opinion of the artificial intelligence that supervises the pages. But allow me to ask you, JJ, how smart is the, uh, is the AI? I think it's a perfect example that you chose, Andrew, because what you're really talking about at the minute is the concept of AI supervision, right? So AI is often used as an excuse to hide bad human decision making. In fact, I think your example is really about that, right? It's easy to blame artificial intelligence when a process is designed wrongly. It's easy to blame artificial intelligence where human judgment is wrong. And I believe it's really critical to ensure that this does not happen. AI should not be given the type of autonomy which we typically give humans. That is why, in my view, the fact that you know Saudi Arabia gave legal personality to that robot uh, Sophia is actually you know legally absurd, right? So stakeholders, you know, YouTube uh, and so on and so forth, cannot evade the responsibility for legal prejudices or faults, ethical faults like the ones you described, simply by arguing that it is their creation AI that uh, created the fault. And so they are almost, you know, separate from that fault. That's wrong, right? So I think what we need to talk about here in your example and is accountability. So accountability means that humans should always be held accountable for the results that their AI systems implement. Otherwise, if you break that degree of accountability between the system and the human, then we are going to have a significant problem like the one which you just explained. But your question ended with a really pointed remark, which is, after all, how smart is artificial intelligence? Well, cool. if you define smart as intelligence, then yes. You know, I think if we understand intelligence to mean pure computation, you know, algorithmic calculation, then yes, I think AI is extremely smart, it's extremely intelligent, and it is more smart than your average human. It's actually more smart than your best human. But if you define intelligence as consciousness, as creativity, as, you know, thinking about thought, then no, I don't think that you can define artificial intelligence as being smart or as being intelligent. So it really depends on the viewpoint with which you define smart. And it really depends on what you're trying to achieve from the AI system. Right. Very, very nicely said. Um, now, I'm not going to go deeper into it because we're going to need hours and hours to uh, to have this chat. But there is another issue, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. There is a huge hype around these, uh, these sectors. There is a huge fear of missing out. And uh, we also noticed a huge spike in uh, hack hacker attacks in the cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, space. How come the AI did not manage to clock on, uh, on these uh, hacker attacks, JJ? Yeah, if well, the AI not only that, sometimes AI is actually used to create the cybersecurity challenge. So some of the viruses which are being developed today are not human development, but they are AI-mediated uh, viruses, which typically create uh, patterns of obscurity which are hard to detect. So let's go to your question. Why is AI unable to solve every cybersecurity challenge that the world is faced with? Well, the truth is, AI has indeed helped us hugely in the war against cyber threats, so much so that if it were not for AI, 90% of the viruses out there would probably be um, undetected. However, because computer viruses or other forms of cybersecurity attacks mutate very quickly, that means that their pattern changes very rapidly, it takes some time until an AI tool actually recognizes that pattern, that footprint, that DNA, and labels it as such. 
you see, Andrew, one of the key capabilities of artificial intelligence is recognizing anomalies out of patterns, but it takes some data to get that type of, you know, positive sense that this is an anomaly, this is a virus which needs to be stopped. And very often at the very early stages of a cybersecurity threat, that type of anomaly would not be classified as such. So it takes some while, some days, and unfortunately, some vulnerabilities until AI is then able to create a proper break, a proper pause on the damage which we're seeing. That gave a big, big boom to the to the cryptocurrency uh, space and the blockchain uh, technology recently. Now, if the AI is so intelligent, why can't it differentiate between a legit business and a scam? And again, now I'm going to mention my own example. InstructFX, the other brand that I'm uh, that I'm running, yeah, was often. Uh, compared with a with a forex firm, and it was taken down from social media. Scams, however, are still thriving on social media, and I'm uh, I'm showing them every day live in my daily broadcasts. Yeah. Legit businesses suffer while scams are still uh, thriving. What uh, do we do if the artificial intelligence is wrong? Like in my case, for example. Yeah. Well, let's start off with the two answers. I think the first part of the answer is technical. So usually a scam business cannot be differentiated from a legitimate business because the AI being used hasn't been sufficiently trained. Or if it has been sufficiently trained, then the information which was used during the training process itself has an error, has a bias. So that means a, tra a training model failure. Now, the wider and second answer, in my view, is that which relates to ethics and governance. So I think artificial intelligence needs to be explainable. So in the case of your company, if you are incorrectly labeled, then AI needs to be able to explain how it reached that particular judgment. Now, when we say that AI has to be explainable, it also means that it needs to be understandable, that its decision-making right, needs to be repeatable, and we can expect that repetition to continue over time. When you're given the reply, well, it was AI's decision, I'm sorry, Andrew, you've got to lump it, that, in my view, is entirely incorrect. AI has to be understandable, it needs to be explainable, and you need to be given the opportunity to redress any decision. Yeah, but we're not. This is the thing. Now, for example, um, I can tell from a mile away, and anyone can tell from a mile away, that we're witnessing a scam advert on social media. The AI doesn't seem to be trained enough to uh, differentiate scams from legit businesses once again. We can tell how much the AI has the, the power over humans yeah, to take such decisions because they, they might impact million-dollar businesses. Yeah, this is a very key question, and I think it comes down to this, Andrew. Are we prepared to trust machines, right? Are we prepared to trust the companies behind our AI machines? Now, my view is that society is still not entirely ready to do that, but we can get to that stage if we build artificial intelligence tools which are based on three fundamental principles that we can all accept. The first one is that the AI we build needs to be lawful. At minimum, it needs to respect applicable laws and regulations, right? Secondly, it needs to be ethical. So if in Cyprus, in Greece, in Europe, we have a, set, a certain set of ethical standards, you need to make sure that the artificial intelligence tool is complying with those societal and ethical and cultural standards, not oppose it. Thirdly, we need to make sure that our artificial intelligence is robust. So from a technical perspective and from a social environment perspective, the technology can stack up. Unless we build AI based on these three values, Andrew, society will never trust the machine. So we will never trust that the decision-making process is clear, is clean, and is applicable to us. That is why the issue here is not a technology issue, so how algorithms work or don't work, but it is a societal, an acceptance, a trust issue that we are really discussing.
So how do we fix this problem, JJ? Okay. Is there a fix to it? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think there are a number of fixes. Yes, Andrew. I think let me start off with the um, example that you gave me with your own company where you felt upset that there was a miscategorization and so many other uh, YouTube channels face the same um, issues. So the first way of fixing this is ensuring that we have a redress by design principle. So, as you know, in most European states, we've implemented the GDPR, which actually has a privacy by design to manage personal data. What redress by design means that any tool which we build needs to have a mechanism for you to be able to appeal the AI decision. Even if the AI decision is right in 99% of the time, and usually it is, Andrew, and usually that is a much higher percentage than human judgment is correct. But that 1% in which the AI is incorrect, we can't just wipe it off and say, you know, that's 1%, let's forget about it, because that's people like you who are suffering from a decision. So the first way to fix this situation is to have a redress mechanism. So when there are wrong AI decisions, there is an easy, effective, accessible way for an average person in the public to seek redress, to seek appeal, to seek rectification from the AI tool. I think the second part of fixing this problem, Andrew, is that we should feel an obligation, and I think this is exactly what you are doing on this channel today, to actually take time to explain the key concepts behind artificial intelligence. What is trust? What is machine learning? What is ethics? What is fairness? We need to give space to this discussion because otherwise all that will happen is AI hype, AI marketing. And that is terrible because that type of speak covers the tough questions and it shifts the discussion away from what we need to be focusing on, which is AI literacy, which is trust. And this is exactly what happened in the in the crypto space and the blockchain uh, space recently. Hype, fear of missing out, not enough knowledge. Now, do you have an AI to suggest to these guys, uh, Jeje? Because apparently the ones they use uh, didn't finish the fourth grade yet. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well, yes, I would say we need an AI which is well trained. So the training model is accurate. It does not have bias. It's been um, verified. Uh, we need an AI which is explainable. In other words, which is understandable by the human, which is subject to its decision making. And we need an AI which has a redress mechanism that is built into the very same tool, which is decision making. I think if we follow these basic three principles, then yes, we have an AI which is more than a fourth grade AI. Okay. Now, the last question. Um, some people yeah, around the world are this close of, of basically giving their life away in, in the hands of, uh, of an artificial intelligence, of a robot, let's say. Others are at the exact opposite pole. How far do you think we are as humans uh, trusting AIs in taking control of uh, our lives and, and businesses and, and money at the end of the day? Yeah. I think just like in ordinary life, trust in artificial intelligence is a a zero or a one. It's not a binary option. We are all on this journey in which we are learning to trust a new order in which the world is being organized. But I think the fundamental question in this journey that we're all going to, Andrew, is this, that trust is maintained by society towards AI when the values and beliefs that we both hold dear are reflected in the AI tools that we use. So when the AI tools seem to be an extension of human decision-making, follow the same rules, principles, and ethics, then we will trust them more. But if companies use AI in an exploitative way, and therefore they do not work to keep you know, clarity, discipline, consistency, balance, ethical values, then trust will begin to break down. So our job is to ensure that we move away from marketing speak 
and we educate companies to ensure that the use of AI reflects the societal goods that humanity is striving to achieve. How can we educate Facebook and, and YouTube and the, the media giants that are basically uh, running the media all over the world? That is the problem. Yeah, and I think one of the deepest problems in that reality is the echo chamber. So very often the bubble in which we are trapped, which only provides us with opinions that are similar to our own, is the very devastating corner of digital presence. I think it is critical that we create algorithmic intelligence within Facebook and similar social media tools that ensure that the people who are stuck in a bubble have access to opinions that are divergent from those which they are holding very strongly. Because it is these people who are most polarized, who are most distant from other viewpoints, which are in need to listen to the contrasting viewpoints, whether they're on one side of the AI. Very well said. JJ, you persuaded me. Um, if you're uh, selling your AI uh, at some point, I'm, I'm one of the people that, that's going to bid on it. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for, uh, for your time today, JJ. Impressive as, uh, as usual. And I'm looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Andrew. It was great to be here. Take care. All the best. Right, ladies, gentlemen, traders, we had uh, Jeje Gat, Dr. Jeje Gat with us, uh, CEO at uh, EBO.ai, bringing us the latest insights about artificial intelligence. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and support us in delivering more great content if you like this show. And uh, until then, until next time, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money. Take care, everyone.